And with the 25th pick in the seventh round, the Buffalo Bills draft Dane Jackson, who I'm sure most people had never heard of. I thought you were going to say me. I was getting so excited. <laughs> You know, Mario, I don't get to watch a lot of pit football. I know they're not far from us, no. but it's not exactly a team that pops up on my radar very often. No, and there's a lot of uh, seventh rounders that don't pop up on anybody's radar. You know, what I mean? <laughs> That's are, true. But and here's what I want you to do before we get into talking about Jackson. Seven, why you pick a guy in the seventh round versus just not picking him up in undrafted free agency. Can you just give us the business end of what that means for the for the player? So the Bills ended up picking up, you know, a bunch of undrafted free agents. And if you saw the embedded series with um, last season, you saw that there was a huge, huge, huge back and forth, right? Yeah. For undrafted uh, wide receiver. Come on, Mario, give me the slam dunk. David Sills. That's right. David Sills. He was uh, the man of many phone calls. Right. <laughs> and what and why? Um, well, in, in in the NFL draft, you could just select the player you want. There's no discussion about what their contract is. It's all you know predicated on where they're drafted. But in undrafted free agency, these players might get a phone call and it's a team saying, hey, listen, I've got a roster spot for you. It's league minimum. I'll give you a ten thousand dollar bonus. Do you want it or no? And then. That might be the only phone call you get, or you might get four phone calls after that with better or worse offers. Yep. But the fact of the matter is undrafted free agents, it is um, just, it's the Alamo, right? It's no holds barred. You're going to get whatever contract you're going to get from whatever team calls you. But the reason you draft a player is because you don't want to have to deal with that, right? That's a player that's a priority for you. You look at them and say, there's enough value here. We don't want to have to mess around with undrafted free agency. There might be teams that have more to offer than us as far as financially, because with undrafted free agents, you can sign them to any contract you want. It doesn't have to be for league minimum. Um, so undrafted free agents, those seventh round picks, those are guys that you're saying we would sign him as an undrafted free agent, but let's not even play with that system. Let's just get him. We'll bring him in. We'll have him on a set four year contract and we won't have to worry about a team coming in and sniping him up from us. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's a, that's a huge point and it shows you what they were targeting. Right. I mean, if they're willing to, the, and you know, we, we've talked about it many times. We talk about it on live stream. We talk about it on our videos. You know, fifth, sixth, and seventh rounds. Those are guys that you you see something that is inherently intriguing about them, and you want to find out more. And you know what? A four year deal at you know basically league minimum is is very appealing to a lot of a lot of teams, especially a guy that you know he doesn't have to start right away. And mm -hmm. if he doesn't work out or doesn't pan out, or some of the things that the red flags keep coming up about those players. Uh, it's a seventh round pick. What are you worried about? Mm -hmm. And I love right. it that it was the Bills didn't have a seventh round pick, and mm -hmm. this is the one they got. You know, what I mean, I'm sure if they got something from the Vikings and they were going to get a corner, they would have rather had Diggs's brother. <laughs> However, <laughs> they got a seventh round pick from yeah. Minnesota with Maybe. that. They ended up drafting Maybe. Jackson, and I, I, I um, just to speak really quick about that, I love the kid's short area quickness. Mm -hmm. I love how physical he is. Yeah. Um, almost reminds me of a Teron Johnson, mm -hmm. but just bigger. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So super aggressive. He's, he's super aggressive. He's, he's super aggressive. And those are, those are some of the hungry kids that, that you want in camp. Um, mm -hmm. Likelihood of making the team. If you had to get a sign a number one through 10, 10 being more, more likely one being he's going to get cut. What do you think? He's like a really solid eight. Like I really? really like, I really like his makeup because there's not many guys who can do what he does. Um, like he plays man really well zone. I'm not going to tell you that he's a great zone corner because he's just so aggressive. Right. Um, so a lot of times you, those really aggressive corners make great man corners. And I think he yes. brings that skill set, um, which is what we saw Kevin Johnson, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, step in and, you know, he played a lot for Levi Wallace uh, Levi Wallace had a little bit of struggle with man coverage last season. Kevin Johnson could be left on his own a little bit. Um, so I think he brings something that isn't on your team right now because you lost Kevin Johnson. 
So he, you bring in another guy who can play man really, really well. We know Josh Norman's primarily a zone corner. Trey can play either, so it doesn't matter. But adding another guy who can play that man coverage uh, and play it really tight and uh, and mean, uh, he he plays a mean cornerback position. Uh, but I wouldn't say he's his own corner by by any stretch, which actually I think gives him a better advantage to making this team. Yeah, because you look around, and with the exception of Trey, you have zone mm-hmm. corners all over the place. Um, Everywhere. To, I, I mean, I love what Teron Johnson is able to do with his physicality at the mm-hmm. line. I mean, the kid blitzed the B-gap last year at some point, I think during the Browns yep. game. I'm like, he's he's a buck 90. Like, what are you doing in the mm-hmm. B-gap? Um, right. So physicality, I think, will always win out, especially mm-hmm. if you're predicating yourself as mainly a man corner. And mm-hmm. the play of the slot to give more, you know, credence to the slot. You talk about a, all right. The Bills re-signed EJ Gaines. Is he going to be your number two corner? No, that's Josh Norman. Mm-hmm. Things could change at camp. I understand that. Levi Wallace could he play the slot? I don't know. He's better zone. Okay, right. You got Teron Johnson there who struggled against uh, certain teams playing in the slot last year. We understand that. Mm-hmm. So why not bring in a kid that, you know, when you're a seventh round pick, first of all, you're happy to be a seventh round pick. Second mm-hmm. of all. You have to remind yourself every day that you're a seventh round pick and you're right. fighting to make the team every single day. If it works yeah. out, these guys are geniuses. Mm-hmm. Could a kid from Pitt at corner, as aggressive as he is, go into a better situation than with Frazier and McDermott? Yeah. I don't think right. there is. Yeah, no, absolutely true. So I, I want to point out a couple things about Jackson that kind of separate him from a lot of other, you know, late seventh round picks. Team captain, so you know that's super high, that's right? Huge. On that's that's really high on being McDermott. Really big football IQ. Get this, he allowed like four. What was forty three percent completion percentage as a corner. Um, 42%, excuse me, it was 42% completion percentage. And some people may say, wow, so teams completed half the passes thrown against him. That's actually really good, (laughs) right? That's a big plus. Um, And it's just because he's so aggressive. And and again, I think you look at the health of Teron Johnson, and that's been a problem. And he could immediately profile into play slot corner because, again, you just brought it up, a lot of man when you're playing that slot corner position. He's six foot, a buck 87, so he's not the biggest guy in the world, but he's bigger than Teron. Um, And I think, you know, this this is just an overall athlete who plays downhill really well. So can you, when, I'm sorry, I hate to use a buzzword downhill. Can you tell people what, when we say a corner plays downhill really well, what, what are they, what does that actually mean? That means that a guy can come up and make a play for you when he has to, like, like a Toronto, like a Toronto Johnson. You know what I mean? If, if you're, if you're playing in the slot or you're playing off, let's say you're playing off a wide receiver in the slot and there's a sweep your way. Are you going to get mm-hmm. there? Are you going to blow mm-hmm. up that, that guy that's coming at you to create a pile in order to bounce it outside or back inside. So if he's coming downhill mm-hmm. with the speed that he's coming down, you say you're coming downhill. If you want to know what a textbook coming downhill player is, that is a Jamal Adams. That is a Jordan Poyer. That is a mm-hmm. Tyron Matthew. Those guys play downhill. I mean, Eric Berry, even before that, those guys play downhill. They come mm-hmm. and get you and they blow up the play mm-hmm. in the backfield. So this is a kid that is not shy as far as, you know, sticking his nose in there with, Mm -hmm. with, like I said before, with Teron and EJ gains ahead of him as a slot corner. I know, I know a lot of times when we talk about things, Paul, we talk about, okay, we already, he's a slot corner. He's going to play slot corner. We don't know that. Mm -hmm. We don't know if they're they're thinking about projecting to the outside for when Norman's gone next year or whatever Mm -hmm. may happen with Levi Wallace or what's going on here. But Mm -hmm. we think that that's what the Bills were thinking. Listen, there's a very aggressive man corner guy who's not ashamed to throw his head in there. And if we have, let's say they compare him to Teron Johnson. If we have two Terons, we don't have to worry about one getting hurt. So Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Let's just throw them both in there. He's a seventh round pick. If we miss Mm -hmm. on him, we miss on him. It's not a big deal. Uh, I I just, I'm trying to fight the urge though, Paul, because this is an underdog town. We're an underdog team. No matter how how many people project the Bills to win the division, this is an underdog town and team. Yeah. These seventh round picks, I love them. I mm-hmm. just I, and especially the way this kid plays on the field, captain, throws his body around, very mm-hmm. aggressive corner. You love to see that. 
You just right. love to see that. Right. Well, and there's some things, you know, and I'm going to look to see if um, I might break down, you know, some game, you know, some, I might break down some, some plays for him, uh, for those uh, members, uh, those members of hashtag nation. You're doing that? Um, yeah, I might do you're this You're doing one. that? I might do this one because I really like him. But there, there's some things that you're going to see out there. Uh, like I'll give you an example, right? There's there's a couple routes that kind of trip him up. One of them are inside out runs. That's when the wide receiver's cutting in towards the hash and then slips back out towards the sideline. Popular his hips route. get really, yeah. His hips he turns the wrong way. It's kind of like there's like in baseball, you, they they call the outfielder turns the wrong way. Yes. Like there's a way to approach it, and it's a, just a technical thing, right? And yeah. it's something you can clean up because right now he's just such a natural athlete he's just always been able to make it work. So probably didn't, you know, coaches probably left that alone. Um, so but in the NFL, right? that's yeah, exactly. In the NFL, that's not going to work. Yeah. So like you can't turn the wrong way on inside out routes. You're just going to get torched and he doesn't have great deep speed anyway. No. So you can't be giving up steps to Stefan Diggs. You can't be giving no. up steps to John Brown. These guys are gone. Um, you know, but I, I want to say that I'm really high on Dane Jackson, but you know, there's there's too much to like here. The Bills got themselves a steal in the seventh round. Yeah, he was projected as a fifth. Mm-hmm. He was projected yeah. as a fifth. And yep. and for the names that you mentioned, Daly going up against Diggs, Beasley, mm-hmm. Brown, all of these guys, McKenzie, will only help him. Right. And you have the cornerback whisperer with Frazier and McDermott. <laughs> I mean, he's he's going to get the best tutelage, and if he's not successful um, with all of that stuff surrounding him, I don't know if, if he'll ever be successful. Right. But I um, just wanted to mention before before we get to the end of this, down in the description, you're going to see a video of him versus it was Davis or Hodges. I can't remember what you told me. It was Davis. It was Davis. It was Davis. It's yeah. about a seven-minute video. It's down in the description. Give that a watch because, uh, I, Paul, do you want to explain the video? I know you said it on the live stream, but I wanted to just bring it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, so what this is, um, it's Davis against uh, Jackson. But the interesting thing is it's not Davis against Jackson the whole time. Um, so what ends up happening is uh, Davis and, and uh, Jackson are up against each other for like the first two series. And then after that, the uh, – for whatever reason, Pittsburgh moved Jackson to another receiver. I don't know why, because he kept Davis in check. Well, Davis goes crazy after that, um, and you'll get to see all those receptions. Uh, so it's kind of fun to watch Davis. It's a two for uh, one. And then, yeah, it was two for one. And then, it, you know, halfway through the third quarter, uh, you know, obviously Pitt was tired of get, just getting torched, so they moved Jackson back onto Davis, and it was shut down City. But you get to see how aggressive he is, yeah. and uh, he closes so fast and so hard. Uh, it's he's a he's a fun player to watch. Um, it is, yeah, he's a minus. <laughs> uh, he's uh he's a fun player to watch. It it's it's a it's a clip. It, it's it's like seven or eight minutes long, but you'll quickly see why uh, why I'm so excited about him. All right, hashtag nation. Don't forget to turn that uh, that red button green uh, red button gray if it's your first time here. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and we're out for this one.